You're watching UATV News. My name is Ina Kosinska. Good evening. Four times members of the illegal armed groups opened fire at the Ukrainian military over the past day. In addition, the mission of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe along the contact line in Donetsk region recorded another 120 violations of the ceasefire. In Luhansk region, 10 shelling and explosions were fixed. Uh, mission operations in temporary land control Donetsk are still hampered. The OSCE representatives haven't managed to send any of its patrols in order to carry out their tasks. The population census organized by Russia in the temporarily occupied Crimea is another manifestation of the campaign to undermine the sovereignty of Ukraine. This was stated by the representative of the U.S. mission to the OSCE, Courtney Austrian. She expressed the organization's concern about the Kremlin's plans to carry out a campaign on the sovereign territory of Ukraine and emphasized sanctions against Russia for its actions in Ukraine will remain in force. At a signature to the joint declaration of the Crimea platform, we reaffirm that Crimea is Ukraine. Crimea-related sanctions will remain in place until Russia returns full control of the peninsula to Ukraine. We join our European and other partners in affirming that our Eastern Ukraine-related sanctions against Russia will remain in place until Russia fully implements its men's commitments. Courtney Austrian charged the first at the U.S. mission to the OSCE. Victims of Russian aggression, 158 children died during the warfare in Donbas. More than 3,000 were injured. These figures were announced by the Ukrainian ombudswoman Lyudmila Denisova during a meeting with the EU Special Representative for Human Rights, Iman Gilmour. In addition, she added that the occupation administrations deprive Ukrainian children of the right to be educated in their native language. Because of the blocking of the work of checkpoints along the contact line by illegal armed groups, the right to freedom of movement and education is violated as well. Get a loan for housing at 3% per annum for 20 years. This is for the third time that internally displaced persons from the Russian-occupied Crimea and certain areas of the Donetsk and Luhansk regions have received such an opportunity thanks to a joint project of the Ukrainian authorities and international partners. More than 100 families received loans at 3%. The total amount of the grant for this project is 25 and a half million euros. 300 winners of, uh, out of almost 21,000 participants were identified using a random number generator. It is very easy to register in this program. First of all, one can contact the regional department of the Molot Darjitlo body that supports loans for youth. It has offices in every region. And then one can find out information and submit an application form to the regional office. One can also apply online through the DIA portal. Any internally displaced person may submit such an application. A Molotov cocktail was thrown into the house of deputy head of the office of the president of Ukraine, Igor Zhovkva. According to the press secretary of the president, no one was injured as a result of the attack. The attacker was detained. The security service of Ukraine said that the attacker turned out to be a 25-year-old man without a permanent place of work or residence. According to law enforcement, he was promised to be paid $4,000 if, if the message about the attack on the official's house appears in the media. He allegedly found the order in the Internet, and the victim's address was received from the customer via Telegram. The police are investigating the identity and motives of the customer. We hope to quickly determine who and why ordered this attack, as well as to bring all those responsible to justice. Igor Zhokva himself has already testified to investigators. He is currently at work, continues performing his functions. According to him, such an attempt to intimidate him or the president's office is meaningless, pathetic, and such a manifestation of hatred is unacceptable in a civilized country. Ukrainian MP Halina Tretyakova is prohibited from participating in five meetings of the parliament. This decision was made by the Committee on Rules of Procedure, Parliamentary Ethics and Work Organization of the parliament. This measure was used due to Tretyakova's incorrect statement about the death of her colleague Anton Polyakov. To remind, he died on October 8th as a result of acute coronary heart disease. Among the versions that the National Police is considering is premeditated murder. Ukraine demonstrates record rates of vaccination for the third day in a row. Almost 270,000 people got their jabs, more than 1,000 mobile teams, 364 vaccination centers and 3,097 vaccination sta stations work throughout the country. More than 6,800,000 Ukrainians have already completed the full course of immunization and more than 8,500,000 have received one dose. 
The chief state senator, doctor of Ukraine, Igor Kuzin, is an in an exclusive commentary to our TV channel, said that by the end of the year, Ukraine will receive another 15 million doses of vaccines. We expect another 15 million doses of Pfizer vaccine by the end of the year. This is in accordance with the contracts that have been signed. And now there is no interruption in the supply of vaccines to both central and regional warehouses. We really see that in some red zones the consumption of vaccines has increased significantly and there are many more people willing to be vaccinated. It is very pleasing that now the system of vaccination infrastructure that has been deployed is reaching its maximum capacity. Since it was originally designed for 250-300 thousand vaccinations per day. And now we observe the efficient use of this infrastructure. Almost 800 criminal proceedings have already been initiated by law enforcement officers on the fact of forging certificates of vaccination against coronavirus. Ukrainians pay money to scammers and doctors to avoid immunization. This was stated by the Minister of Internal Affairs of Ukraine, Denis Molostitsky. He urged citizens not to risk their health and life and to inform law enforcement agencies about fake COVID certificates. Unfortunately, some Ukrainians are willing to pay money for a fake vaccination certificate. Addressing scammers and doctors, the national police is constantly fighting such fakes. Almost 800 proceedings have already been initiated. The responsibility of those who commit this criminal offense will be inevitable. Therefore, I ask you to report such facts to the hotline of the cyber police or to calling 102. Take care of your life. The former MP will be prosecuted for using a fake COVID certificate. The other day, during a document check at the Brisbane airport, border guards found two women with fake vaccination certific certificates. The police have established that one of the defendants is a former MP. According to Minister of Internal Affairs of Ukraine, Denis Monostirsky, it was an ex-MP, Nadia Savchenko, and her sister. The fake documents were seized by law enforcement officers and sent for additional examination. Starting October 21st, one cannot use a train or bus to travel to another region of Ukraine having no valid COVID certificate or a negative PCR or express test. New rules for uh, interregional travel during pandemic have come into force. The day before, 500 express tests were carried out at railway station. They show that 18 passengers have COVID. Our correspondents will tell more. The bus station in Kharkiv, the first morning international route to Prague via Kyiv. To get one seat, a ticket is no longer enough. All passengers are checked for having full vaccination certificate. People who travel from abroad already have it all in their telephones or in paper variants. One man took bus in Kyiv, he already had documents. He showed, I said, please have your seat and let's go. If you're vaccinated, please travel without problems. All passengers were allowed into this bus. They say people had prepared all documents in advance. I have an international certificate. We did it willingly and just got it when the new rules came into power. However, not all passengers were able to take into regional buses at the bus station in Dnipro. Go there, let them return your money. What is this? It's just chaos. Well, how did it happen? Tell me. New rules have affected the number of passengers and trips, they say in the carrier's trade union. Now we see, first of all, a decrease in passenger traffic by about 10-12 percent, given tickets sold for interregional routes. And a reduction in departures is also fixed within 10 to 12 percent. Documents are also checked at railway stations. The Lviv car attendants and stewards do it. Several people got on the train for now six or seven. Everyone had documents. All law-abiding citizens of Ukraine, they all react. Everyone understands that vaccination is taking place all over the world, and not only in Ukraine. Negative PCR test, a rapid antigen test, as well as a certificate of full vaccination or a temporary certificate of the first jab. All this gives her the right to travel by interregional passenger trains in Ukraine. I think it's good because there's a lot of people with COVID, even with cold, and everyone is trying to get into the train, everyone sneezes, coughs. I think all will be good. For those who did not have time to prepare documents in advance, express testing points were deployed at railway stations. Passengers having tickets get a discount. The price is 350 hryvnias. Did you check the prices in other laboratories? On average, 780-980 hryvnias.
One can also get vaccinated with Pfizer, AstraZeneca or CoronaVac right at the train station. Passengers are immediately given a document on the first dose of the vaccine, which can be immediately shown to the conductors. I'm going on a business trip tomorrow and having no certificate, I won't be allowed to the train. Alexander had planned a trip from Dnipro to Lviv a long time ago, but it happened to coincide with the new travel rules introduction. He says he did not get any jab, and in order not to change plans, he passed an express COVID test in the morning. I don't really like this, so to speak, hassle, but well, of course, I have to comply, how else? There is no other way to leave the city. Seat number 19 to Khmelnytsky linings are paid. Now your document, please. Conductors of the Dnipro Truskovets train say they had no problems with passengers. Due to the lack of the necessary documents, only one passenger was not allowed into the train. She came up with some certificate, but it was not valid. Well, then I had to send her do the test. If one has a ticket but no certificate or a test result and is not allowed to board the train, they can refund for the unused travel document at the station ticket offices. The refund is made according to the rules of passenger transportation, that is, withholding included. From October 21st, express testing points have also started working at railway stations in Kyiv, Kharkiv, Odessa, Zaporizhia, Mukachevo, Kriviri, Vinnytsia and Poltava cities. Reported by Vadim Kramer, Natalia Husak, Yulia Bil and Nadia Suhrukova, UATV News. Buddha guards warn Ukrainians against using fake COVID certificates. In addition to the risk of finding oneself in an intensive care unit with the complications of the coronavirus, the use of the forged documents at the state border entails criminal liability. State border guard service of Ukraine told the authenticity of documents is checked using the safe border system. Out of 630,000 COVID certificates issued, 300 fake ones were already revealed in October. One shouldn't use fake documents at the state border, because this foresees criminal liability. Besides, if our citizens are caught showing fake documents to law enforcement officers of the countries they are going to, they will also be held liable in accordance with the legislation of the country of their destination. Studying at Ukrainian higher education institutions will switch to remote mode from October 25th to November 15th. This was announced by Minister of Education and Science of Ukraine, Sergei Karlet. This recommendation was developed by the Minister of Education after consultations with the Minister of Health, the Minister underlined. This is a compulsory measure to counter the coronavirus pandemic. In addition to universities, institutions of secondary specialized and postgraduate education will also switch to distance learning. As for starting in schools, starting next week it will be organized taking into account the epidemic situation in each region. I call on all educators, students and their parents to take the situation with the spread of COVID-19 extremely responsibly. Everyone can get vaccinated, that is, protect oneself from high risks of the disease. Each teacher can become an example for colleagues and relatives who are still hesitating to make the decision. The shooting day of the Western Rust in New Mexico stopped because of the tragedy. Actor Alec Baldwin fired a prop gun and killed operator and director Halina Hutchins and wounded director during the filming. Halina is from Ukraine. In recent years, she has lived in Los Angeles. Why the gun turned out to be charged with real and not blank cartridges, the police are finding out. The accusation of the famous actor has not yet been brought forward. Alec Baldwin is a Golden Globe and Emmy winner and has appeared in dozens of films and TV series. Works by Ukrainian artists as well as 3D images and panoramic photos of objects in an exclusive zone. Interactive exhibition dedicated to the Chernobyl disaster was opened in Kyiv. Here's what my colleagues saw there. It is possible to visit the exclusion zone from the center of Kyiv thanks to the organizers of the interactive exhibition Chernobyl. One can see the Ferris wheel in Pripyat, the swimming pool, the Polissa Hotel and even the enormous radar station. One can just download the application and scan the posters placed on the artist's alley. For example, now I'm virtually visiting a sarcophagus over Reactor 4 of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. The message of this exhibition is that it combines standard familiar formats and new technologies. We see standard posters that we only need our phone to activate. Not everyone can visit Chernobyl now. This is far away and not everyone is allowed for health reasons, for example. But everyone can get to know more here and visit Chernobyl virtually. 
In addition to 3D images and videos, the exhibition also features works by artists on the topic of the Chernobyl disaster, and even the classified documents of the Soviet KGB. Visitors of the exposition are delighted with it. Of course, it's a great idea. Such things should be not forgotten. Young people nowadays do not always like to go somewhere, but in a smartphone they are like at home. In addition to Ukraine, the interactive exhibition is also held in Japan, Germany, Finland and seven other countries around the world. For another two weeks, Ukrainians will be able to visit the exclusion zone, being in the center of Kyiv. Reported by Valeria Nikipelova, UATV News. That's all for this hour. More updates on our official website, YouTube, Twitter and Facebook pages. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.